Hey, Molly, do you know what they call a baby griffin? A cub? I mean, maybe. I don't know. I don't know either. A griffin baby? A griffin baby? Maybe a lion thing? I don't know. That's why I went... Okay, so they're... Okay, so griffin is part lion, so it's a cub. Part eagle, which would be a an eaglet. eaglet. And so it's a or a chick. Cublet. A cublet. It's a cublet. It's a cublet. We figured this out. We're awesome. Comment below what you think it should be. But we are doing first page critiques today. And the author for this lovely first page, which is fantasy, went with grifflet. Which is so adorable. <laughs> we just love it. So yeah. welcome to the semi sages of the pages and our first page critiques. And if this is the first time that you're joining us, my name's Teresa. Oh, and I'm Molly and welcome. And if you've never done one of our first page critiques, we followed the even better if method, which means that we give positive feedback. We tell our uh, author what it is that we like about their piece and then we provide feedback in terms of this is really good but it might be better if yeah our goal on this channel is to help you make your piece the very best version of what you're trying to create we're not trying to change we're not trying to make you into something you're not we're just trying to help you succeed your vision Exactly, exactly. But before we get into it, if you like these videos, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Super important for channels like ours that are up and coming, and we are definitely up and coming. <laughs> it's late. We're really tired. <laughs> I broke Molly. She's going to need to do so much editing here. <laughs> I just want to say I love you. <laughs> You not <laughs> apparently not in the same way you love me um since you're up and coming but uh anyway so we have a lovely piece today that i i mentioned is fantasy should i jump into it i think so i think we're ready let's do it it is called the harbinger in all the eight years of erwin's short life she had never expected the creature born of prophecy to be so adorable. Once the thick, sticky golden membrane had dried away or been eaten, the grifflet was more fluffy than the others, round and downy like the tufts of bog cotton growing in the fen. The differences between him and his nestmates didn't stop there. The other grifflets chirped. He squeaked instead. The other grifflets blindly clamored and wobbled over each other, stretching their necks out and fluttering their tiny wings the dark line of his eyes opened in a slit and he looked at arwin his beak almost a smile in shape in the dim opalescent light of the cave the voices of the other air rights murmured as they gathered around for a closer look you think he's the one electa wouldn't uh, let her egg hatch till sunset it's supposed to be sunrise, isn't it? She didn't even roll it into the stream till the sun dipped. I and this one is in the 13th. I and this one is the 13th hatch, but he's the biggest. Look at his color. It's nothing like that. It's nothing like his sire or dame, just like it describes. The tippin has already started then, if this is the one. Hush nay. Didn't I say you've nay understanding of? Erwin paid the others no mind, human and griffagon alike. She watched as the grifflet, with his eyes already open, waddled away from his nestmates and climbed onto her, his little claws making pinprick holes in her yellow linen dress as his weight sunk into her lap. His gray feet were disproportionately large. The baby griffagon stared into her soul with eyes that twinkled like, gray, like green glass beads, and Erwin smiled. They had a kenning. Ooh. All right. I would like to uh, slightly apologize to the author. I did my best, but I was not. Uh, I We read these cold. 
right? So I don't prepare beforehand because we like to keep these anonymous. We like to give our unadulterated first opinion of a piece. We think that's very important, but that also means I didn't get to practice. And then I hit that dialogue and I was like, all right, let's make the girl who can't read well do this. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I, I apologize for any mispronunciations or, or lapses. Um, did my best. You did great. What are your first thoughts? What'd you like, Teresa? I love the, I love just the cuteness. I was so, just so into the cuteness of like, the, the other grifflets chirped and he squeaked instead. The other grifflets blindly clamored and wobbled over each other. Like I was like, oh totally see these like little griffin creatures like in a nest and climbing all over each other and um i loved it it actually i don't know if you're an ann mccaffrey fan um but it actually reminded me a lot of um some of her dragon stories when dragons hatched um so if you are cool i hope that that was an easter egg if not check her out she's pretty cool i loved I loved the sentence at the end where he goes and he waddles away from his nest mates and he climbs onto her and like the weight sinks onto her, into her lap. I think many of us have the experience of adopting a dog or a cat and that animal coming over to us and, you know, sitting on us or laying on us or something like that. And there is like this moment where, I don't know that I would have described it as stared into her soul, but I get what you're, I get exactly what you're going for in that moment where you're like, oh, oh, my heart, this is, this is my, my animal and I'm it and I will never let anything bad ever happen to it. And yeah. I thought that was really well done. Yeah. And I loved the um, green glass beads. Such great word choice. That's really fun. All right. Yeah. I, really really liked a, a lot of this one um you it's clearly fantasy that's fantastic um you have a clear idea of the world that's really well done um yeah well well done i think all right what are our what's our feedback i think for me i would like i think it boils down to like i would just like a little bit more in terms of figuring out where I am and what's going on around me. So I have a very clear picture of the little grifflets, like, but I, I get confused when the dialogue starts because I don't know how many people are talking. I don't know how close they are to the, um, to the narrator. I don't know if it's two people back and forth. I don't know if it's five different people. I don't know if they're in a cave or on a cliff or in a river. I just, I'm very like kind of out of place. And I think some very small little like tags here and there could really make me feel like just a little more understanding of the world around me. I don't think you need paragraphs of description that says, you know, on the side of the mountain near the granite lake of, you know, we don't need that. But just a little bit more here and there could make me, e even if, you know, she's sitting down, like, okay, what is she sitting on? Is she sitting on grass or stone or rock or a cold cave or, you know, are her feet getting wet or, or just those little things could really help me understand like a little bit of context to the world. Yeah. I, yeah, I would agree with that. I actually had a kind of a like, Ooh, potential moment. And I don't know if this was intentional or not. Okay. And it's the line that says Arwen, Arwen paid the others no mind human and Griffagon alike. And I went, Oh, are some of the people talking Griffagons? And I and my brain went, ooh, this could be really cool. Oh. But see, but exactly, but Molly didn't pick up on that. I thought that was just another word for griffin, like griffin kind. But you're saying there might be like this race of like part griffin, part humans, or like or they or could the, speak. Or or the people who ride griffins are called griffagon. I don't know. See, and this is where this is where we need, I think, a little bit more. So to Molly's point, we need a little bit more about who is talking. 
Um, are they human? Are they griffagons? Are griffagons? I don't. Can they I don't talk? Know, I don't know what a griffagon is. Yeah, can they talk? Um, I think just a little bit more, just to orient us uh, to what's going on. And then the other thing I would do, and this is this is a me thing. I think you got to go lighter on the dialect. I honestly, if I saw this, I probably would be like, this is going to be a lot of work to read. And I'm not sure I want to put in that work. So just a little lighter on the dialect. We'll keep, we'll have the point across that are Scottish maybe or Scottish type that the Kenning makes me think Scottish. Um, you can, you can go a little bit lighter on it and still get the point across that it's Scottish. Yeah. Um, another thing, like, I think what made it also difficult is there's a big chunk of dialogue there, which is not broken up at all. And you don't know how many people are talking. And because we don't know that, they all kind of, all the people talking, whether it's two people or five people, they all sound the same because their accents, accent and the words that they're using are the same in all the dialogue. So it's, it's, adds to the confusion. So you might be able to get away with the accent in this way if the characters are more identified and you know which is which and maybe certain people are from certain areas that have maybe more distinct accents or less of an accent for a different person. You might be able to do that, but those are just things to keep in mind for your story to you know, get the most bang for your buck and have the less, least amount of confusion and reader, uh, what's the word? Reader complaint? Yeah. Reader gripe. Maybe. Yeah. 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 Basically a reason for the reader to put the book down. Yeah. You don't um, want because to give them read reasons. Not, not early on. You want to hook them. You want to hook them. But man, this little grifflet. I would probably stick with this book for a long time for the grifflet and be like, tell me more about the grifflets. I yeah. really want to know more. They're, they sound so adorable and so cute. So I really want one. Can I have one, please? Yeah, right. <laughs> How do I get my own grifflet? Um, and if this is your story, we always keep things anonymous, but you know, you can always reach out to us. You can self-identify if you want to. We hope that we've been helpful and we're super excited. Let us know if your story is published anywhere or where it's at, if people can go go buy it or how they can support you as well. And how, how I can get a grifflet or a stuffed animal or something. Yeah, maybe like a little grifflet sticker. <laughs> um, there's merchandising opportunities here for you, author. And on that note, uh, anything? Oh, and if you want us to read your first pages, don't forget you can submit to at www.semisagesofthepages.com and have a chance for us to give you a critique right here on this channel. Yeah. And don't forget to join our Discord. We're trying to build the largest author community on Discord. It's a really positive, helpful, uplifting place. You can join our Race to Rejection. We're actually going to, uh, there's talk about a contest on there. Maybe if you it's, go to the Discord, you'll find out more information. You might. you might. You might. So come check it out. Come hang out with us on our Discord. It's really fun. All right. Now get out of here. Go right. Go right. Bye now. Grifflets. Grifflets. What's a grifflets? Grifflets. We're just going <laughs> to scream at our listeners. Grifflets. <laughs> <laughs>